This is a 2018 Can-Am X3DS. Uh, I've done several mods on it uh, that I feel are required for being out on the trail and away from where you parked. Um, maybe some of you riders out there, drivers out there, might find some of these mods useful. So I thought I'd make a three-part video that covers the front, the crew sitting area, and the rear uh, to go over all the mods. Uh, please note up front, I'm an amateur fabricator at best. And everything that I've done for the most part, I would classify it as prototype or demos. I followed uh, three simple rules when I was doing the mods. First rule was is it had to serve some functional reason for putting it on. I didn't really do anything for looks. Uh, the mods, I tried to make look nice, but I'm not going to put something on there just to add looks to the machine. It needs to serve some purpose. Second, it should be as light as possible. Off-roading uh, weights your enemy. So anything that I did, I tried to keep it to the absolute minimum weight. And then lastly, um, anything that I did, I was trying to minimize uh, the impact on the center of gravity. Or if at all possible, and some, uh, if it opportunity present itself, to actually improve the center of gravity. Which is, I don't want to say next to impossible, but you could do a little bit. So that said, like I said, I've generated a three-part video. I'll start the first part uh, here in a second. Starting passenger side, right front. Tire wheel combo. It's the Carnivore Maxxis 30-inch tire with a DWT sector wheel. It's not the Baja Heavy Duty. The wheel uh, beadlock runs about 14.6 pounds. The tire, I forget what the actual weight is, but the combination of the tire and wheel for the DS model uh, adds about, on average, 8 pounds per corner for your unsprung and rotating mass. You notice the mass a little bit uh, and the extra inch in tire height on acceleration, but uh, not enough. I mean, you really have to be paying attention to notice a difference. Next, front shocks. They're the Fox Racing internal bypass upgrade that Fox specifically built for the DS. It's pretty much an RS design shock on the DS. I've used them once out on the trail, 25 miles on them. A huge improvement over stock. The slow speed chop is, is way improved and just overall performance is way improved in my opinion. Speaking of the front shocks, this is the front tower mount area. This front brace right here that is bolted through the front shock area. The only thing it does is hold this plastic. It doesn't tie into the frame at all. So what you get this is kind of free floating and any type of movement in this bolt, any flex in this bolt, this thing's just gonna move around. The, you can look online, there's a couple different manufacturers, uh, aftermarket companies that sell a new brace that actually ties into the frame rails. Um, it doesn't take, in my opinion, you don't have to really add that much to it because all the pressure is pushing inward and up when you're bottoming the suspension out. When you're rebounding, it's really not that much pressure on it. So it shouldn't take a whole lot of reinforcement to tie this into the frame. I'm probably going to do that upgrade myself to come up with my own custom design. But you guys can look online to see you know, who's selling what out there. Down here, steering unit. Behind it, if you look on the passenger side, there's actually a rectangle tube that runs across the whole um, front frame area. I think it's about 17 inches long inside. What I've done is it's a 10K toe strap that I've folded over itself and then uh, you string tie to compress it down really tight and then wrapped it in an, kind of, um, an environmental seal and then I put the HVAC, it's that silver tape, HVAC tape around that. It measures about 15 inches long. I slid it in there and then I drilled a hole in the upper and lower and this ran some um, safety wire through that actually holds it in. If I run into a situation where I need to use a toe strap, I just pull the safety wire, pull that out, unwrap it, kind of like a Christmas present, and then use it, and I'll have to repack it when I get back home, because it's not something you're going to do on trail side. But wanted somewhere to get it out of the way, it's not something you use a lot, 
So hopefully that works out pretty good. And right behind the front shocks, there's an area. This is your front sway bar. These are the mount bolts. You have a pair on either side that hold the sway bar in. Pretty stout for just a simple sway bar. What it is, I created a aluminum. Uh, this is all fabricated out of, uh, you know, just flat, either angle iron or flat pieces of aluminum. Built a box that matches the angles of the shock, just coincidentally worked that way, and then the front, and it holds a scissor jack, screw jack inside there. When I get to the other side, I'll show you more detail on it. But the whole unit with the jack and the aluminum mount, um, it's just under three pounds. This gives me the ability to carry a, a jack to be able to change out, you know, use a spare tire. Most of the mounts out there that you buy or can get, they go towards the back and they weigh quite a bit more. And when you look, if, any, if you have one of these X3s, if you look behind the shocks here, you can actually see it's a fairly big open area. So it slides in there pretty nice. Next thing is car horn. So as I mentioned before, it's a 120 decibel car horn. In the past, when I've been out on the quads or prior side-by-sides that I've owned, I run into situations where I get behind people and they, for some reason, are oblivious to that, that I'm behind them. You know, putting it in neutral and revving the engine doesn't work. Not in a race, so I'm not going to be tapping the back of them with a push bar. That isn't going to work. So I decided just to add a very simple horn. It's tied into a rocker switch that's in the um, front dash area. The, you can buy them off Amazon, probably many other places. The rocker switch actually matches the stock factory look, so you, you can't tell that, well, you could, but it, it blends nicely with, the, with all the factory switch. So it's just a little simple horn. I tied it into the front push bar mount that comes across here and ties in there. Works pretty good. Moving to the front, this is a Dragonfire. Just a second, turn off this light. This is a Dragonfire front push bar. I've done a couple mods to it. Um, there's a few out on the market that the the bar actually comes up and goes throughout the whole front. I don't need that much protection. I don't want that extra weight. This bar actually had a, the tube came out and created a single bend. It almost looked like a nose on the front of it came out about four inches. When I put this in the enclosed trailer, that became a pressure point right where that radius was. And it also meant that the length of the side-by-side -side with a rear bumper on put me right at the maxed, max length inside with the ramp door closed. I didn't like how close everything was getting. I didn't like the single pressure point from the nose, and I didn't like the look of it. So I chopped it off, inserted uh, the same tube still, welded it, blended it, didn't waste a whole lot of time blending it in completely. Uh, it's Mostly a test to see if I'd even like it. The other thing on the Dragonfire is down underneath, they have, I think it's an inch and three quarter tube that runs down and it stops about here. So if you can picture the round tube just going, it, it ends up right about there. And it, it didn't blend well with the front. Um, it also became a an impact point so I smacked them about three times one of the tubes I actually crushed in so I decided that I wanted to blend and as you can see underneath with the skid plate that I've added it actually blends in a lot better so I cut I cut the tube and then I inserted uh, some metal welded it in tapped it and then used two bolts there and then I used a rivet nut on the front put two bolts here and then in the very, very back, I went ahead and tapped just close to where the front diff is and tapped in there. And you can actually see that it blends in fairly well. This piece of aluminum, scrap aluminum I had, I used a 20-ton press to make a couple bends in it. Wasn't worried about getting the radius to match exactly. Worked out pretty good. 
I've tested it, uh, not smacked anything, but just being installed. It seems to work pretty good. Also, on most of the bumpers, I don't know for sure, but it seems like a lot of the bumpers, they come with uh, some type of press-in end cap. I would venture to say the vast majority of these are just machined aluminum. You can pop them out. They usually have like an environmental seal around it, an O-ring, one or two O-rings to kind of keep the water so you don't get rust, water, and corrosion inside. So on this one, I drilled a hole through the end of it so I can take an Allen wrench and shove it all the way through and gives me a kind of like a T-handle and I can pop this out. Because inside this tube, I've got a, a foam insert here that stops anything going beyond this point into the radius. And then I've got an aluminum high volume bicycle pump inside this tube and the pump is wrapped in environmental seal and then it's in foam so it can't rattle around so for some strange reason I'm out on the trail and the electric pump that I have that runs off the cigarette lighter craps out or whatever and I still need to get air in a tire I just pop this out pull the pump out and I sit there and pump with my hands probably <laughs> I don't know how long I'm not going to test it but in a pinch gives me the ability to have an emergency pump on the trail should work driver side front of course same tire wheel combination same shock and then we have the jack mount i don't know if you guys can see that i'm going to try and turn the light on there we go sway bar same mounting bolts as the other side on the top of this mount that I made, I drilled two holes in the top of the screw scissor jack and then put uh, an Allen, round Allen head uh, bolt. And so they become guide pins that actually hold the jack in place. I also uh, took a socket and welded it to the end of the jack and it's the same ratchet that I used to pull the lug nuts or, or do any track or track side trail side uh, repairs or tightening bolts with with the ratchet so I just put the ratchet on there loosen it slides out when I'm done slide it back in twist it up by hand till the guide pins go in then use the ratchet to put positive pressure just like you would when you store them in a car 25 miles hasn't come loose doesn't vibrate it's out of the way seems to work pretty good one of the mods I decided to do on the front is uh, soften up the front sway bar a little bit. I've done some mods on the back to soften the rear and thus it drives the front to be a little bit stiffer. Uh, what that will promote is understeer and I wanted to get rid of some of the understeer. I wanted the front to bite a little bit better. So the way I've done it is the stock mount um, has enough metal and is strong enough with the weak, with this fairly flimsy front sway bar that I just drilled a hole a little bit further up in it. So that creates more leverage uh, to torque the sway bar, twist it, and then it also doesn't move it as far. It shortens the stroke a little bit. It's not very much of a change, but it should be enough to notice a little bit better uh, front end bite. It's a fairly easy mod to do. Uh, I'll post the results later on. So here's with the sway bar installed with a modified lower mount point. It moves it inboard a little bit, so it increases the leverage from the suspension against the sway bar and also reduces the total movement uh, since it's closer to the, the rotation point. Both of those uh, make the sway bar feel a little bit softer, and so I'm hoping this balances out the sway bar mods that I did in the back where I lighten the back. This hopefully will give it a little bit more oversteer, which I prefer definitely don't like understeer. It seems so far seems to work out pretty good. The only other thing on the front that I think I need to talk about um, is down here. You can find on the internet. This is the the A arms, the upper and lower A arms, and this front nose piece. It bolts to the four mount points, and that just like the upper shock mount, that nose piece is free floating. So these bolts that hold the suspension, they're just going to want to tip. And you can buy mods that actually tie into the frame, this front frame area, and, and, and make this nose piece more integrated or more solidly mounted against the frame. So it's a little bit stronger if you smack something. That's one of the mods that uh, I'm going to go ahead and, 
and do. I haven't decided if I'm going to just build my own custom mod or if I'm going to buy something. Because one of the things I also want to do is Can-Am came out with their the new differential. It's a full lock differential. I think it's called Torque Lock or something like that. You can retrofit uh, the older model X3s with the newer diff. And it gives you, because uh, these diffs aren't full lock. You still have you know, one wheel that'll drive and one wheel that's going to free wheel. And you can watch some of the YouTube videos where people are trying to climb stuff and one tire's not even doing anything. So I'll probably upgrade that. When I upgrade that is when I upgrade all the A-arm stiffeners and the, and the nose piece. So that covers it for the, for the front. If you guys got any questions, uh, just drop me a comment and I'll see if I can answer it. Guys, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye.